if anyone actually thinks that I was lucky to get all those Hermes bags, then that's just playing into the elitist mentality that they want you to think, that they want you to feel validated by sales associate offers. They want you to feel validated by any offer from them that you're a part of the club. Like that is how they want you to feel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. All right, so I'm finally sitting down to film this video. You guys have been asking me for it. In my, getting in my DMs. Everyone voted that I should do this video when I ran the poll. Um, and yeah, I'm finally sitting down to film it. I hesitated for a while there. Um, purely because I feel like when you do these kind of videos, when you talk about all those bags that you sold, yeah, you will get, you're going to get some hate. You're going to get people that are like judging and all that sort of thing. Big deal. But at the same time, the thing is, is that I also don't like when I feed into the narrative of people that get sensitive about a brand and are so overprotective of a brand and that sort of thing and, and uh, overprotective of uh, defending elitism. But I ultimately decided to sit down and film it because overwhelmingly the people that support me, the people that like my content, the people that like my honesty want this video. It's going to be somewhat in an order but not like not literally like a sequential order of you know when I sold it sort of thing but it's going to be somewhat you know from like oldest to like newest sort of sales and that sort of thing. Okay so all these bags are going to be bags that I bought for myself and I had actually used them before I even like sold them sort of thing so they were all going these are all going to be bags that were sold as used bags so I can give you an opinion on how they sort of went and you know as to whether it was my reason for selling it was you know from experiencing it or whatnot I can kind of give you a bit of the lowdown on that I'll try and be as helpful as possible in this video I'm going to start off with the mini Evelyn this was definitely not the first bag I ever sold but I just feel like I'm just going to start off with this. Mm. I had three of these. So the first one I ever owned was in Blue Payon. At the time I actually didn't really notice anything else sort of to it. But the main reason that I sold the Blue Payon one was the colour. Was that I feel like the Mini Evelyn. I feel like some people will like it in a colour. Like a pop of colour. And other people would just like it in a neutral. I don't know where I personally sit right now because I don't have a Mini Evelyn. Um, but... I think that at the time when I got it, I liked blue payon as an actual color, blue payon, however you say it. Um, but then as it got to like using it, because it was kind of like a casual bag that you would sort of use, I felt that that color didn't really pair well with my outfits. Um, I definitely was more into neutrals, even though back then I, it's like it was weird. Like back then I was always asking for color, but then I never really suited color. And then the other mini Evelyns that I had were actually, hmm, one was in Gris Etan, and then the other one was in Blue Onk. So the Gris Etan was with silver hardware. And I, this is when I actually started to notice and feel at the time that the mini Evelyn strap is too long. And I felt like, yeah, it was a bit too long and it kind of hung a little bit too low on me. Not in the kind of ideal spot that I would have a crossbody bag. But then also as well, that was in silver hardware. And I just... Didn't really like the silver hardware with grey. And when it comes to like a grey tone, I just love the contrast. So the Gris Etan Mini Evelyn is when I realised that the strap was getting too long. The Blue Onk Mini Evelyn, that was in gold hardware. So I was like, yes, score gold hardware. These were from, these bags are actually from Europe. I got them with personal shoppers, right? These last two Mini Evelyns I'm talking about. But that, at that point, I actually realised 100% that the strap is too long for the Mini Evelyn for me. I was like, no, it is too long. There is a solution to the problem with the whole Mini Evelyn strap being too long and there are actually now buckles that, that you can get that actually will adjust the mini Evelyn strap so I'm gonna leave these linked down below so you do actually as a matter of fact need them in a pair okay so what you want to do is have both of these buckles on the strap and then you're gonna take the other side or well, we can take whatever's the longer side and then you're gonna thread it through now this is where it gets a little bit tricky uh, you're gonna go through to the opposite end over here just gonna go under so you're going underneath you see how it's like this here you want to go under and now you're going like I said you're going from one end to the opposite uh, buckle so this one that was closest to that end should still be hanging there so then you should have these now close together so you want to pull them in close and you still should hang on to that um, strap that you already just threaded through you want to keep that there in your hand because you're still going to continue to use that same strap that you threaded through or the same end you're now going to loop it through onto the other buckle that was just dangling there 
that um, was the, the buckle that was closest to the strap end. And then you're just going to thread it through like that. And then over there. Okay, so then you should have uh, two buckles that are fairly close together. And now you can just do the adjusting that way. So if you don't need it to adjust it all too much, you can just get it to like that point. If you only need it a little bit smaller, the strap, or if you need it a lot smaller, you can do so. So yeah, this is how you go ahead and adjust the Evelyn strap, the mini Evelyn one in particular. So if you found that it's actually too um, big for you, then yeah, these buckles can be an ultimate game changer. So needless to say, I now actually want to get a mini Evelyn again because it was only like just a tad bit too long on me. Okay, so now moving along, I think now for the most part, these are going to be more of like the Burke and Kelly Constance kind of bags. So the next one is is my Ardennis Kelly 32. Now, oh my gosh, I love Ardennis leather. It is such a sturdy, strong, robust workhorse leather. If you want to know more about leathers and like scratch resistant leathers and non scratch resistant and all that sort of thing, I did do a completely separate Hermes video on that and I'll link that down below. But Ardennis is like at the very top there. It is the most scratch resistant, robust leather and it's the one that even though like you scratch it, it doesn't like rip off paint or anything like that. It's actually a natural grain, it's not like an artificial grain. Such a great leather. But ultimately, the reason I sold that Kelly 32, it was vintage because it was actually my first elusive Hermes bag that I ever actually bought. And the reason that I bought it was because I was tossing up between a Birkin or a Kelly, right? I actually know that ultimately I wanted the Birkin, but the Birkin was very like far more expensive in the resale market back then. The Kelly didn't have a lot of hype then, and you could get the Kelly bag for cheaper than the Birkin, like if you're going with a vintage option or pre-loved option. So ultimately I stinged out and went, nah, I'm not paying like over $10,000 for a handbag. I'm not doing it. So I went with the vintage Kelly 32 in our Dennis. And it was like, I paid like about $8,000 Australian, right? It was a great deal and oh, such a great bag. And it came with the strap as well too. But then ob obviously I just couldn't get out of my head that I wanted a Birkin. And at that point, because it was early on, I just wasn't like sure if I wanted to then go Kelly then Birkin. And I also didn't know if I was actually okay with then say spending like $14,000 on a Birkin. Um, and keeping the Kelly bag like to me that was just too much money to have on handbags Like I wasn't even into classic flaps back then even though classic flaps back then were actually cheaper I just didn't really own very very expensive handbags. I had a lot of handbags though Like I had a you know fairly big collection of handbags, but they were all like Celine Louis Vuitton um, Vintage Chanel um, Mostly a lot of Louis Vuitton actually so it may be there was something else in there, right? There probably was another brand. Like I think I actually even owned Michael Kors back then. So yeah, I just was not prepared to like just go ahead and fork out, you know, the Birkin money. So I ultimately decided to sell the Kelly to fund getting my Birkin 30. That was the primary reason that I sold it was because I knew in my heart of hearts that I actually felt that I really wanted the Birkin and I'd kind of settled for just going with the Kelly. But I ended up making a profit on it anyway. Not a big one because um, back then the Birkins and Kellys weren't as hyped as what they are now anyway. In general, overall, they weren't as hyped. So if I can give you any kind of like advice from like the reason that I I sold the Kelly 32 it was ultimately that I settled you know I went for the cheaper option because I just didn't want to fork out that money but what I realized is that what I should have done was just save more money or sell another handbag or just deal with the fact that I wanted the bag that was more expensive but I would have been I would have been happier because I wanted that bag so that's kind of the lesson that you can take from it is don't settle if you actually really want something in particular and you have your heart set on something it is better to just wait and save or sell something else whatever you need to do and just stay on track for the actual one that really makes your heart sing because if you compromise it doesn't always work out and a lot of the times you end up still thinking about the thing you want that's the problem. You still think about what you really wanted anyway. Like you, like you can't really take that out of your head. And moving on to the Birkin 30 in Togo Black Palladium Hardware. Um, now this definitely wasn't like the next one I sold or by any means it wasn't. But like I sold it much, much later on actually. But I'm just going to continue on with the flow because, you know, it's kind of the next bag that I had bought in, you know, after I sold the Kelly 32. So the Black Birkin 30, it hung around with me for a while. And... Why did I sell that actually? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what ended up happening was um, I bought the Kelly 28 in Trench in the Return with Gold Hardware. And 
I ended up having the Birkin 30 and the Kelly 28 in trench. But in that meantime, I'd actually already been start, uh, I'd already been shopping at the store in Hermes in Australia, in my old state. So I'd already been shopping at that store in Sydney. And I really truly didn't think I was going to get a bag offer for ages. I thought it would be like at least like eight months, maybe if I was lucky, eight months. That's what I kind of thought. And then perhaps probably a year or more or never. That's pretty much what I thought. Like it was maybe never going to come. But then lo and behold, like literally a month and like a little bit after I bought the Kelly 28, my sales associate offers me the Birkin 25 and Rose as a lead, my then sales associate. I'm not 100% sure if this was like the reasoning that I sold the Birkin 30. I know I sold it because of some kind of guilt, like some kind of guilt for like having expensive handbags sort of thing. I know it was for something like that because like this was back in 2017, very different time. This was the time that I had given birth to my daughter. She wasn't even like one years old yet. I felt like that bit of regret that it was like, you can't just say, like, I just bought this, like, Birkin 25 and Rose Azalea. Now I've got this Kelly 28 that I just bought. And then only, like, about, like, five months back, I bought the Birkin 30. Like, maybe something like that. It was, like, too much, too soon, all in one time. And I just felt way too guilty. So I believe that is exactly why I sold the Birkin 30. I also, as well, the other reason I sold the Birkin 30 was because it wasn't a shoulder bag. And I knew that having two Birkins was going to probably be pretty inconvenient and I needed, like I'd rather have a shoulder bag. At that point, I actually would have regretted selling my Kelly 32 in our tennis actually at that point. So after I sold the Birkin 30, it's a bit of a blur as to what was sold and when and when was added. So it is going to be a little bit confusing for me to sort of break it down. Let's just say that the Kelly 28, I actually ended up selling that as well. And the reason I sold that was because I found that it actually was too small. And I also felt that the tone in trench, the yellow tone, kind of clashed a bit with my skin tone. Now I definitely don't think that way. Like, I was just overly, like, picky and thought about things way too much back then. The mindset of being a new mom, there was overwhelming in emotions and hormones. Like, it was just a very kind of different, like, mindset back then and persona. So that was the reason I sold the Kelly 28 trench. It's too small. Didn't fit the milk bottle that I needed for my daughter. Felt that I clashed with my skin tone, right? Um, at some point, I added a uh, Kelly 25 in Rose Japua. Now, I don't know if I still had that. I think I might have still had my Birkin 25 at that point, or I might not have. Maybe I didn't. I can't remember. But the Kelly 25 in Rose Japua. So I had that for a bit, but ultimately I realized that reds are not my thing. And I still now know this. So thankfully enough, I haven't actually repeated that again, but I know for sure red is not my color. Even though that's slightly more on the pink side, it just had that little bit too much of that red tone in it that just didn't work for me. <laughs> it just wasn't something that I really vibed with. That bag was actually really cool. Like in a way, I kind of somewhat regret it because I got it for such a good price when I got it. Like bag of spec again for that kind of price. So in a way, I sort of regretted it. But then again, I also don't because I think that even if I had it now, I probably wouldn't really be reaching for it. I probably just wouldn't go for it. I'm definitely into neutrals more so and just some colors, particular colors. I would say actually the lesson from that is figure out your colors first before you buy the Hermes bag. So that doesn't mean don't buy Hermes bags until you figured out your color. That's not what it means. What it means is that it's actually kind of better to buy lower price luxury, say like something like Senrev, which I actually then started to do later was test colors with uh, more contemporary luxury, which is at a lower price point. See if the color kind of worked with me and if I liked it, if it went with my outfits before I would then go and actually buy the Hermes bag in that particular similar color actually similar color I should say that was a way I kind of learned to figure out my colors later on but this was something that I didn't figure out earlier on so I made a lot of mistakes when it came to like colors so at obviously at some point I've actually sold my Birkin 25 in Rose Azalee so I think that was probably before or after the Kelly 25 from Rose Japua and I sold that for a couple of reasons or a few reasons I should say um, wasn't practical with a kid to be carrying a tote bag. You definitely need a shoulder bag. Um, it was a very bright color that I just felt like it was, I just didn't have the confidence back then. Um, I definitely was more body unconfident, I should say, like not as confident in my own skin, you know, more unsure of myself. And again, it comes down to the fact that, you know, when you become a new mom, it definitely changes a lot and you, it takes some time. And this is something that people don't talk about is the mental health of new mums. It's very overwhelming and we just 
it's like a whole persona flip because your whole biology kicks in for the nurturing and caring for your children but then you're also trying to deal like your brain is mentally trying to deal with all those changes that it hasn't experienced before it's totally new it's something that is already there in your biology but it's still new to your personality it's still new to you so that was something that i was dealing with and at that point that's when i was like you know what i can't do bright colors i don't feel confident people are looking at me you know i didn't have that body confidence and i didn't want to be looked at with like this bright pink barbie bag and i didn't look like a, a petite skinny trim fit kind of girl you know even though i requested it i requested a rose Lee bag but i asked for a picketer not a birkin um and i don't regret taking it because i love that color and that was the thing it was like i was requesting colors and i was like i was buying colors that i really liked but I just couldn't wear them because I didn't have that kind of like style confidence and all that sort of thing to have that color. Now it's a different story. Like I definitely am okay with some color, but I still also know that I'm definitely far more of a neutrals girl. Like this is something I figured out in the process. So the lesson from that is, like I said, just try to figure out your colors first before you like dive into like buying that very expensive Hermes bag or try colors first in the lower end price point, even like Kate Spade. Tory Birch, all that sort of thing. Coach, like try their colors first. Try to find the alternative, like try to find like the color that you're kind of looking for in Hermes, like the similar color in those contemporary brands. Wear it, see how you go with it. Do you, you know, does it pair well with your outfits? Are you reaching for it? All that kind of stuff. Figure that out before you go ahead and splurge like over $10,000 for the Hermes bag. That's like the best advice I can sort of say. Um, I definitely still did not figure that out just yet. <laughs> like at the time that I sold the Birkin 25, I still had not figured that out. But I'm saying now I have figured that out. So at some point I got my Constance 24 in Grima Wet with Palladium Hardware. And I actually, I actually really loved that color. But problem with that bag. I found it really bulky um, because it was Epsom and it was actually not as light as a Swift in a Constance 24 or ever color. So yeah, I found it bulky, managed to scratch the bag because of my natural nails. Also didn't love the fact that it was in silver on a gray tone. And at that point back then, my, my collection was very minimal. So it's like, I was far more like, I think I was expecting the perfection from the bags. I was, I was expecting it to do what I needed to do beyond what it really could do if you know what i'm sort of saying because it was just they, because i didn't really have a lot of hermes bags i only had like pretty much only had like back then it was like a rotation of about three and then maybe like something else you know or maybe there was just other brands in the collection like a speedy 25 and louis vuitton Porsche matisse like those sorts of, sorts of things I, I was expecting different things from my hermes bags i was i was expecting my hermes bags this is a big point, actually. I was expecting my Hermes bags to function as though they were the kind of bags that you would get from, like, Louis Vuitton, right? Louis Vuitton makes very practical handbags. I'll give them the utmost credit for that, is that they have a variety of handbags that are ridiculously practical for the mum, the working woman, the lady of leisure, the casual gym girl, like, the travel around the world woman. Louis Vuitton makes all those bags. Hermes on the other hand, unless you're prepared to go to their other products like that Hermes has, like maybe the Belide and the Halzan and Evelyn, different sizes of Evelyn, then maybe they kind of have a bit of that. But I still would say Louis Vuitton beats them hands down when it comes to like the wide range of versatility that their bags have. So it comes down to the point that at I was expecting my Hermes bags to be able to function the way that I wanted them to function. But the reality was is that I should have been adding Hermes bags just to complement the collection. That's all they were. They shouldn't actually have been thinking of them as I, I need a mum bag. I need my bag to do this. I need my bag to be able to be a crossbody bag so I can use it daytime, but then also nighttime. I need my bag to, you know, yeah, go from day to night. I need my bag to be good for travel. I need, like all these things. You're just not going to get that from an Hermes bag. I'm sorry, people are going to like think that, no, you can get everything from Hermes, but no, I actually think you can't. I think that you actually really need to get other stuff from other brands because the other brands are going to give the diversify your collection. So that was a big thing I, I look back when I think about that Constance 24. I could definitely go a Constance 24 again. A few years ago, I was expecting something different from my handbags. All right, so um, I think, yeah, it's all that Constance 24 and I ended up getting a Constance 18 in Swift in black. Uh, with silver hardware. Now, I got this because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be able to crossbody it. It's swift. It's not going to be bulky. It's Constance 18, so it definitely won't be bulky. And I bought it from Japan, and the problem was is I actually... 
I feel like the seller was pretty crappy with their photos and I just thought because in my experience with Japanese sellers is that they always will say fair condition but it's actually like great condition that's pretty much how they typically nine times out of ten are but this seller was an exception so when I got that bag it had so many scratches on the bag um, on the hardware all over the leather and everything so I ended up doing like my own sort of self spa to really improve the condition of that bag and it truly did and um, but the buckle was never unscratched like you could never fix that buckle it was just completely scratched and that was something that kind of bothered me and especially bothered me because the bag was just not the condition that I was expecting so yeah I ended up selling it for that reason and I was pretty disappointed because I really liked the Constance 18 uh, I also had a Constance 18 in Blue Electric. Now the Blue Electric Constance 18 was again because I missed having a Constance 18. and um, But then I quickly figured out that Blue, Royal Blue is not my colour. Even though it suits me, I just don't like it. It's like a case of like the red. I just don't vibe it. So I just do not own Royal Blue handbags. I feel like they're just not, they're not me. <laughs> <laughs> They're just totally not me. Ended up being sold purely for the color factor with the Constance 18 and Blue Electric. That was in Tadalact, and oh my gosh, I love that leather. Tadalact, I love it. Now, I know at some point I had a Pickerton 18 in gold, but it was actually the old Pickerton 18, the one before the lock, so it was just called a Pickerton 18, not a Pickerton lock. Um, and I sold that because I wanted the lock version. I was like, yeah, I actually really want the Pickerton lock. But I bought that from Japan uh, Vintage, and it was such a great deal that I bought it that when I sold it, I ended up making a profit on that anyway. So, okay, another one is the Rose Azalee Constance 24. So yes, I did, I did try a Constance 24 and Rose Azalee again. So I bought the Rose Azalee Constance 24, you know, as like some kind of a sign of like me, like feeling more confident in my body. But um, I actually, I think that I sold it for a couple of reasons. Like I know that I sold it because I was pretty determined on getting a uh, special order bag, like trying to buy a special order bag in the resale market. Don't know why I was so determined on it, but I was. Um, and then the other reason was because nothing to do with it being bulky, because that was in Evercolor. So that was actually really easy to use being in Evercolor. The Constance buckle, mind you, is not the easiest buckle to deal with. It is actually pretty cumbersome. I feel like with the Constance, it's either the bag that you really love, or it could be the bag that you really hate, or it could be the bag that you just want to have in your collection for the sake of it being like a crossbody kind of bag or bag that you can crossbody and that sort of thing and not being a top handle. I feel like it's that kind of bag. There's kind of like a an in-between kind of bag. It's like the bag you buy every now and then. It's either like that or you absolutely love it. You just want all Constances or you just don't like the Constance at all. That's that's kind of how the Constance is. Whereas the Birkin or the Kelly has got a bit of a different vibe to what I feel like. It's no, never like the kind of filler bag. It's not a filler bag. It's like a dominant kind of handbag in your collection. So I think the main reason for selling the Constance was to try and, you know, hunt down a special order instead and just put the money towards that. And also I just, it was bright pink. <laughs> Like it was bright pink and I still had not really diversified my collection that much back then that I still was looking for my Hermes bags to do something in particular for me. Like I wanted it to be my casual day bag, something like that. Like I was still think of it, thinking of them in that way. And the problem was I still also was not adding those other kind of Hermes bags that I probably should have been adding to give myself that diversity in my collection. Like the Mini Lindy, for example, is that kind of bag actually does what I needed to what I kind of thought the Constance was going to do for me, that Mini Lindy does it for me, hands down, no doubt about it. The Picoten is, again, that kind of bag where I've got that tote bag sort of versatility that you get with the Birkin that can carry more, but I can attach a strap to it. So it does what I need it to do. Whereas, like, it's kind of like me going, oh, yeah, I'll use the Kelly because it's kind of like the Birkin but with a shoulder strap. But it's not really because it's, like, in and out, you know, a little bit more like a bigger bag. It's not really like a hug you kind of bag, that kind of thing. So I still could not, I still don't really use the Kelly in that kind of way at all. Um, I use the Picatin and the Mini, Mini Lindy's like the most in my collection. So, but that's now. <laughs> Back then, I hadn't figured that out yet. Back then, I was thinking that the Birkin Kelly Constance can be used as like, just like normal bags in my lifestyle, like day use to night use and the kind of use, you know, when you've got kids and that sort of like kids and that sort of thing, even though back then I only had my daughter, but I still had that mindset that those bags could do it all for me. And whereas I feel like now, no, they can't. You need other bags. You need to have that versatility there. Okay. So the next one, um, so the Kelly dance and now I kind of in a way somewhat regret, but I kind of don't. So the problem that I had actually with that bag was that when I bought it, 
the the way that Hermes kind of packed it from the store that it actually come from, I didn't buy it. I got it from a reseller. Um, they put like an air pocket inside the bag and then they put the strap inside the bag. And what ended up happening was that it was pushing out the leather, the, the leather in the bag. And then when it got shipped to me, it was in summer. And I think what had happened is that it had actually just like made the, like the leather push out, like expand, I suppose, somewhat, even more with the heat. And it just kind of molded in somewhat of a weird way to that air pillow that was inside the bag. And I could never unsee it. And there was also a dent inside the bag as well from the strap. And I don't really necessarily, I don't blame the seller per se, because what actually happened is that that bag was just shipped as is, as it was from Hermes, from the person that bought it to the reseller and then to me. So I don't think that anyone really actually paid attention to, to it, how, the, how it was packaged, because it was actually done by Hermes anyway. And it always kind of like, yeah, yeah, like I said, it bothered me that there was this dent inside the bag and that I felt like there was a bit of a bulge on the front of the bag. And I tried to like smooth it out and that kind of thing. I suppose it didn't really show up in, in photos, but I always kind of knew it was there a little bit. Like it was kind of like, it was kind of like the leather had stretched sort of, if you know what I mean? Like it was ever color leather and it had no stays in the bag. Like it was a soft... Uh, it's a soft bag, the Kelly Dance. It's designed to be like for travel, so you can flat pack it and just put it in with your luggage. So it's got no handbag stays inside that create structure. Um, but yeah, because the leather had kind of stretched on the front, I could never unsee it and I could tell that it had been stretched. And I was expecting like a brand new Kelly Dance Perfect like it was from store, but it just didn't turn out that way. I ended up having to put extra holes into that belt loop. So it's not great, like if you're short, that you need to put extra holes in in order to make it like a crossbody bag. Otherwise it's just way too long. But otherwise it's a really cool bag. It's a pretty cool bag. You know, maybe I'll get it back in my collection. Maybe I won't. I'm not fussed if it's in Ver Cricket again. I could, would go pretty much any kind of color in the Killy Dance because I feel like it's pretty fun. Now, before I move, go on to the other bags, because there is other bags I sold, I'm going to collectively explain the reasons why I sold all the bags that were offered to me by that sales associate um, from Hermes Sydney that caused me all that drama. And it really just comes down to the fact that I did not want to have anything in my collection that reminded me of her and even that store to some degree, you know? Oh yeah, all those bags, um, the Pikaton 18 in blue pale, uh, the Belide 27 and the Mini Ruli in Berenia. All of them were sold because they just had bad juju. Like I, I mean, you gotta think about it this way. If you have something in your collection that does not bring you joy or you look at it in a kind of like Mmm, that reminds me kind of feeling like if it gives you some kind of bad feeling That's not a good thing to have in your collection like anything that can even be like bags that you maybe Dropped on the ground and now it's really scratched like that can give you a bad feeling too Like those kinds of things can you can go oh shit. I it's such an idiot How did I let that happen? How did I do that? Like you would never un undo that kind of like feeling with it so that's how I pretty much in a nutshell felt about those bags is that they would remind me of that fact that she caused me a whole heap of drama, even though it wasn't her alone. I know that it was her and the old store manager that were like the core of that drama. I'm never going to be able to undo the fact that that store gaslit me in the way that they did. It's not like I went in there with a flamethrower threatening anybody. I wasn't a danger or anything like that. I was just a customer that was asking when was I going to get my bag. Oh, and so that you told me is your client got their bag. Do you know when I'm going to get mine? Or oversharing my life story because I'm an oversharer and I talk too much does not make you a bad person. Like just telling people your life story doesn't make you a bad person. If you don't like people to be nice to you and you want people to just be cut and dry, then just say so. Or move them on to another like sales associate that is bubbly and happy and you know likes to just chat because there are plenty of those other sales associates that work at these kinds of brands that actually are just normal and want to have a chat and actually tell you about their lives and want to know how you're going even by text message I get some of my sales associates like from Chanel the beauty department in particular and um, even one of the ones that I know from Hermes not the text message thing, but my Chanel sales associate the beauty counter would like text message and say how she's going and that kind of thing. And yeah, like I've had that experience with sales associates before. Like every one of them's different. Some of them are actually cool to call you and have a chat. Like, like I said, I still have an Hermes sales associate that calls me to have a chat because she's a normal person, like a normal kind human being that just likes to chat. And there is nothing wrong with being a kind human being. We need more kind human beings. So that is why I would never like this. I, 
those bags were never going to stay in my collection. There was like hands down, no doubt about it. Once that happened to me, they were always going to have to go. They were never going to stay because they were always going to be a reminder that they were from someone who was deceitful and gaslighting me. Like, that's not cool, man. No matter how many people want to like make an excuse for that, that is not cool. You could just be flat out honest. Like, or you could just shuffle the person along to someone else without having to be honest. Like, that's an easy solution, right? If you really don't want to be honest, then, you know, fucking that's the easiest thing to do. Just shuffle them along to someone else and just be like, oh, sorry, I, I needed to move you on to another sales associate because I had too many clients. <laughs> I don't know, whatever, like as if I could do shit about that, you know? But anyways, that being said, yeah, those bags, I just didn't want in my collection for that reason. There's no other reason for selling them. I think back and go, yeah, the Mini Ruli is a great bag. I'd love to have one again. Um, Berenia, would I go for Berenia and Mini Ruli? Mm, maybe not, because you're handling the flap quite a lot. So if you have like cream on your hands, oils, you're going to get a lot of patina on that fl uh, on the front flap, on the Berenia uh, Mini Ruli, because of the way it's handled. So I would say Berenia is better for maybe Kelly bag, Birkin bag, maybe, because you're just only doing the handles. You can twilly cover them. Pikaton 18, I have, have them back in my life, so definitely no issue there. Color was great. I have a blue broom, Mini Kelly. Uh, the Bolly 27 in Cray, I missed that. That was such a great, great bag. I really should get a Bolly 27 again. So yeah, it's quite obvious that there was just a, I'm not keeping those bad feelings in my collection and get it out no way so that brings me to my other point and I'm going to tell you now that Birkin 30 in e-tube I don't know if you guys have noticed but on my Instagram pretty much ever since that stuff happened to me at Hermes Sydney I hardly use that Birkin 30 like it has not really been used much at all yeah it's been used but not a lot um I think it's a few factors like maybe it's just because you know it's a top handle bag and you know I just don't, I tend to prefer bags that I can some way carry on my shoulder. But then again, I've used my Birkin 25 a lot. So I actually kind of think that it's, there is still that kind of connotation there with that bag, that bad kind of feeling because it was from that store that caused me a whole heap of headache and it just caused, it was like the catalyst for my drama. So I think that I probably may let that go. I know that I probably, I don't know, like it's it's a really tricky one because I actually absolutely love the color combination of that Birkin 30 in e with gold hard hardware. e with gold hardware is like the perfect combination for a Birkin 30, but I think I can live with the fact of getting that in like a Kelly. I feel like I can live with it and just get a Birkin 30 in something else. I think that that bag does have somewhat of a bad feeling with it that I can't sort of shake. I'm gonna say I'm a superstitious person by any means. But sometimes you can get a vibe from things, right? Like sometimes you can, it's like you could meet a particular person, you can just get a bad vibe. That's kind of the vibe I kind of still have with that bag. Like not a bad vibe, but just that vibe that's still there. Like I just can't shake it because it came from that store. So, and the other thing as well is that per the person that actually offered me that bag, I think I actually reached out to her to ask if she could um, be my sales associate when I moved to state, like up here. She never got back to me because she ended up being at the Sydney store anyway too, like later on. So she left and then she went back. So I feel like she's kind of just like the rest of them and just put me into that category of this crazy mad bitch. And whereas like, I see it as no, you guys are fucking gaslighting assholes. So I don't have a good feeling with that bag, right? I know it's just a bag at the end of the day. I do get that because quite obviously I've diversified my collection a lot now and I, you know, I'm more than happy to rehome things if they don't work out, to me, out for me. And that's just what I feel is that I feel like that bag's got a bit of a bad juju with it. I don't want bad vibes in your life. Only good vibes, only good vibes. All right, so I've got the last like few bags here. Now, Kelly 28, was that the one I sold more before the others? I'm not sure, can't remember. All right, doesn't really matter what order these are in, okay? It doesn't really matter because they have different reasons anyway. So the Kelly 28 in Cray. That bag in Celia is like a damn weapon, I'm telling you. And there is someone else I know that actually lives in Queensland, I'm pretty sure, and she told me the exact same thing. She's like, that thing is a freaking weapon that you're going to poke your children's eyes out. And seriously, it is like that. It's like this massive bag on a pendulum. Because the Kelly 28, it's structured when it's in the Celia, so it does actually feel bigger. It's like carrying, seriously, it's like carrying a Birkin 30 on your shoulder, but with sharp corners. If you, are, if you have children <laughs> and you're thinking you want to use a Kelly 28 on your shoulder when you're going out, like, you know, to lunch with your kids or wherever with your kids, I don't know, whatever, 
I would say maybe not the Kelly 28 and Celia. I would say maybe Kelly 25 and Celia or go Kelly 28 and Retorn or even Kelly 32 and Retorn. Anything without the sharp corners if you've got young children around because you're going to poke someone's eye out potentially. That bag was always somewhat a pain in the backside because it was like whacking into my children, whacking into things, falling off my shoulder. Like it, it was just no. Nah. But I ended up replacing it with the Kelly 25, which is back there. So absolutely no regrets for selling it. I did the right thing. It was the best thing I did was sell that and then just get that in the 25 size, which is not like a weapon. Okay, so it was the best thing. Mini Kelly in black, because I think I sold this before my mini, my um, Kelly 25. So the Mini Kelly in black, I sold that because I actually had been, I'd already made a deposit for the Kelly, Mini Kelly back there that's in Ostrich, the special order one. I'd already made a deposit for that. So I decided, I'm gonna let go of the mini Kelly in black. A couple reasons I was, well, the reason I was okay to let that go was because it had scratches like on the back of the bag. It was in Chev, but whoever owned it before managed to like scratch the back of the bag. And I kind of, I didn't really want to take the bag to the Hermes spa. To be quite honest, I don't know what I'm ever, what I'm actually gonna do when it comes to taking my bag to an Hermes spa. Even though I trust the people that are here in the state that like I live in that work at Hermes, I get some. I think actually Sydney would have to get my bag. I think it goes from the store here, then to Sydney, then to Paris. So I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that. I haven't quite thought about that. <laughs> I think maybe I would go with leather surgeons for like maybe sparring my bags in the future perhaps because leather surgeons do the best job, you know, um, and their work is completely undetectable. Like that's just my opinion. I can't say that that's 100%, but a lot of people have said that they've had no issues with getting their bags sparred by Hermes after they've been sparred by leather surgeons at some point. So maybe I'll do that. But yeah, basically the mini Kelly had scratches on the back. So I was like, oh, I don't really want to send it to the spa. Like the scratches weren't bad. Definitely not. And they're at the back of the bag anyway. Like I'm really just being feeble about it. Like picking for slight excuses that I was okay to let it go. But it wasn't a main reason. The biggest reason was that, you know what? I'd rather the mini Kelly in ostrich. And I already got the mini Kelly in blue broom. Um, is the mini Kelly black really that special that I want to keep it? And I was like, nah, I feel like I'm okay to let it go, you know? And um, I ended up getting the mini the mini Lindy in the in black in gold hardware anyway. So I have absolutely no regrets because that mini Lindy is amazing. The mini Lindy is a great bag and that's the kind of bag that I use, would prefer to use anyway as a crossbody bag, you know? Kelly 25 and Gris Asphalt. Now you guys, a lot of you that knew that I was selling this were totally shocked, um, but I, I feel like I made the right decision. Now the Kelly 25 and Gris Asphalt, love, 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 love that bag. It was in Swift. Love it. Love, love, love. Tick, tick, tick. The only thing that wasn't a big tick was the hardware was silver. And this goes back to the whole thing I had with silver on grey. You think I'd learned my lesson, right? But the Kelly 25 and grey asphalt, I actually owned that since 2018. So I had that for a long time and I only sold that like late last year, I think it was. Very late 2022. So I owned it for about four years. Yeah, four years I owned that bag. So it had it had a good life with me. It, it was very much loved, very much enjoyed. Love it. Still do. Don't regret selling it because I know that eventually I'll be able to get a green asphalt bag anyway in gold hardware. I'm sure that it'll come about at some point in time. I'll chance upon one at the price that I'm okay with paying or it'll come back. Swift is such a great leather, especially in like the Kelly bags. It is just, it hugs to you. It's just casual, easy to carry. It's just lightweight. Like there's just so much I love about Swift. So it's actually nothing to do with the leather. There is absolutely nothing to do with really, I think with most of my bags, the only ones that I ever really had problems with the leather was Epsom. Otherwise everything else was fine. I did forget to tell you about something from ages ago. My Kelly 32 in CL, that was in Clemence. Okay. So, um, I did enjoy that bag. But Clemence is a heavy leather. That was something that I actually noticed pretty quick with that bag. So I would say with Kelly 32's, try to steer clear of Clemence leather because it's actually heavy. So that was a part of the reason why I sold it. The other reason is that it was advertised to me as not CL. It was advertised as something else. Blue Lin. That's right. It was, it was advertised as Blue Lin. But the seller was wrong. And it was actually CL. So when I got it authenticated, it was CL, not Blue Lin. Um, so that was kind of a bit disappointing because I was like, well, I really wanted blue lean because it's kind of like a gray color. But yeah, that was kind of the, the reasons I sold it. The color wasn't actually as I thought it would be. It was a bit heavy as a Clemence bag. Um, and that was about it. A lot of bags in, a lot of bags out. I'm pretty happy like with the bags that I have now with, you know, just 
with disregard for the Birkin 30, because we know that's a different situation, but in terms of like the Hermes bags that I have added, I'm really happy with them. That I think that I've, I'm really, I've really kind of figured out colors, what works for me, what kind of styles of bag I need, what are the bags that can do it all for me, and what are the bags that can't. I think the biggest advice that I can give in terms of something that I really learnt, is you just like know, like you really truly know your style and your color vibe, I would say go with neutrals or just try contemporary brands first for the colors that you're thinking of from Hermes to see if it actually works with you, at least until you know for sure. Because I knew back then that I wasn't sure, that I didn't really know my style and I was still figuring it out, especially like when you have a life change of, you know, having a child, of course, your style is going to change. Totally. Your whole lifestyle changes, quite obviously. So that's like a, a big tip. Try cheaper brands first, figure out your colors, you know, know what works for you in terms of color because Hermes is expensive. We'll go for the mini Evelyn in colors and that way you can get a feel for it if you're actually using it and that kind of thing. The other thing is don't think that the Burke and Kelly Constance is the be all and end all because they are not. Hermes has other bags and there are other brands that have a lot of other bags too. Like you do not have to make your collection strictly just Hermes. If you need versatility or if you have a life that is not a life of leisure and you're a normal, you know, working class person or you're just someone that has kids and, you know, lives a very casual life, whatever it may be. You know, if you don't have kids, that's also fine. But if, you have, if you're working and you live a casual life, you have to think about your own personal circumstance. Don't think that the Bergen Kelly Constance can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G because it can't. It really can't. You need that versatility in your collection. You need other bags in your collection to do other things as well. You'll figure it out yourself, like you'll figure out your Birkin Kelly Constance, what works for you. Like even I know people that use the Birkin as like a tote bag for work. Like that's what they use as a tote bag. But then if they're like going grocery shopping, maybe they prefer the crossbody bag or something like that, you know? Like maybe they go and use their pochette Matisse instead. And that's something that I really learned is that I was always trying to get the Birkin Kelly Constance to do the A, B, C, D, E, F, G in my life in terms of like handbag but it was not possible. It was never gonna be an achievable goal. And I figured that out later. And when I diversified my collection more and added in particular bags for particular reasons, you know, like backpacks, mini Lindy for your crossbody bag, Pickerton for like your tote bag that has a shoulder, that you can put a shoulder strap on, mini Kelly for like going out or just like very, when you need very, very minimal things. And then having the Birkin 25, so like going out, but then when you don't need to like be hands-free, but you want to carry that little bit more than say like the mini Lindy does or whatever it may be. Like there is just all that versatility there that I'm really happy with how I've like curated my collection that I actually now feel like what I tend to add will probably stay. Like, I feel like I've just figured it out. I know that some of it's not going to be totally, totally useful because it was a lot to do with like personal things that had happened. But I hope that I've kind of been helpful because I know that you guys have been asking for this for a long, long time. So it is done. I have said it. I have said all the MS bags that I've sold. And when you think about it, I bought far more in the resale market, far more pre-loved. I feel like I've even forgotten some seriously that I have bought in the resale market than I ever got from the Hermes store. Like they really didn't help me out all that much. And if, and if anyone actually thinks that I was lucky to get all those Hermes bags, then that's just playing into the elitist mentality that they want you to think, that they want you to feel validated by sales associate offers. They want you to feel validated by any offer from them that you're a part of the club. Like that is how they want you to feel. That is like, it's not good. Don't feel that way. Like, yes, if you love their products, buy their products. And if you get a bag, great. Basically, in a nutshell, what I want to say is that don't, don't let Hermes have the hold on you, give you that feeling where you're like, when's my bag going to come? Do I have to spend more? Is it coming anytime soon? Or I really want this bag, but I don't know when I'm going to get my offer. And all these kind of mindsets of like doubt. Don't ever let them have that kind of hold on you where you're actually stressing about the situation and stressing about the whole process. And that's definitely not to excuse the process. What I would say is that you have to go in with either the mentality of you're just buying what you want. And if a bag comes and great, if it doesn't, you don't care because you're just going to go ahead and buy it anywhere else anyway, or you're just not that fussed, right? Or you have to go into it with the mentality of full awareness, knowing that it's going to be painful and a long painstaking process 
where you're not going to have any certainty or really know when you're going to get your offer or what it's going to be. Like you have to be like fully aware of that and be okay with it, not stressed about it. And obviously I already know because I've been down this rabbit hole before. Um, and I see, I see it with other people. Other people do reach out to me and they do tell me and they say, you know, I hate the Hermes game. I've been waiting forever. It's been two years. I haven't got an offer. I spent this much, you know, or I'll get people saying to me, oh, I spent this much and I still haven't got an offer. You know, I'm just going to buy this and this and this and then I'm done, you know, and then I'm just going to wait for my offer. And like all these kind of feelings and emotions I get, it's like people tell me their, their situation. They reach out to me and they ask for me, ask for advice. And I do get people reaching out to me like this and telling me this. It gets me between a bit of a rock and a hard place because I would say that, well, they've already gone into the process. So they've already started it. Like, what can they do? They may as well, I suppose, ride it out, I guess, you know, because unless you can start fresh again with the mentality I'm kind of saying, like when you're in this situation, it sucks. It, it does suck. But that's why I kind of say that the best way to kind of go about it, if you are going to try and get your bags from Hermes, is that you just don't let them have that hold over you. You go into it thinking, if I get a bag, I'd great. If I don't, I don't. Um, or you just, you know, you just deal with it as it is and laugh about it and not really stress about it and just know that it's a real painstaking process. Like, even for me, when I came up here, I wasn't even thinking about trying to get a Burke and Kelly Constance. People were saying that that's what I was doing, but no, I actually wasn't. I was actually literally just trying to get Mini Lindy, Mini Evelyn, and those kind of bags, like Halzahn 25. I was just trying to get those bags. And then... When they said to me, when the sales associate said to me, oh, I can actually get you that, or I can get you, I can just go straight for like a, a Burke and Kelly for you. I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll just get the Birkin or Kelly then rather than, and I'll just go and get those other ones online. And that was the mistake I made. I actually should have just taken the, the earlier offer because then I probably would have been able to get that before I even got like blacklisted from Hermes for selling the garden party or trying to sell the garden party, I should say. But the thing that was different that, that when I did try like when I did just try to get those other bags, but then I changed to, because I knew that the sales associate I had was really good. Um, I wasn't all too worried at the end of the day. Like when, when I got blacklisted and I filmed that video, I did it for the drama effect, that last one. And I think most people already knew that anyway, because I was laughing about it and just taking the piss out on it. But I had already gone into the process going, I know that they're assholes and I know that the process sucks anyways. So I just didn't really care. I got blacklisted and I really genuinely didn't care but yeah hopefully you guys found this video useful hopefully i was able to help you guys out a little bit in terms of like some of the bags and that sort of thing let me know do you want me to do like a video of i suppose like going resale versus buying at the store like maybe for particular bags you know that kind of thing maybe i could do a video on that i feel like the only concern i have with that is there will be like I feel like you guys probably already know my answer anyway, for the most part. I don't know. I guess, I, guess I, I have more to sort of say on that regard. So I don't know. Do you want me to do that kind of video where I tell you, in my opinion, should you go to the Yomo store or should you be shopping the resale market? And maybe I can give some further detail. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And I hope you appreciated the amount of time that I was talking then. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video.